Hi, I'm Vincent Trundle from ACME. I'm going to introduce you to an exciting new teacher resource called Game Lessons. But first, I'll tell you a little bit about ACME. ACME is a museum in the heart of Melbourne, a museum for the moving image. So this covers all forms of screen-based media from film and TV to art and video games. So ACME aims to explore, to talk about, to hear about, and to enhance our media and screen literacy. Inside the freshly renovated ACME building are some great exhibition spaces, including our major gallery and exciting new free exhibition, The Story of the Moving Image. There are excellent workshops and lab spaces, state-of-the-art cinemas, a media preservation lab, and really good, nice, lovely spaces to meet with your family and friends. ACME is, is very much about screen literacy and education. The education team focuses on primary, secondary, and to a certain extent, tertiary levels. As you can see on the screen here, we have programs for students, including workshops and talks and screenings, exhibition visits. There are also teacher programs aimed at increasing their screen literacy and helping them meet their curriculum needs. And we have a great range, a really great range of online resources which help build people's ability to confidently read and express themselves through the moving image. And I'm here to tell you about one of the newly launched teacher resource called Game Lessons. So at ACME, we saw that there was an excellent teaching and learning opportunity for video games to be brought into and used in the classroom. But we also recognised that there was a lot of barriers blocking teachers expanding their repertoire to use video games in their practice. So this is where Game Lessons came from. Game Lessons is a database, a library of lesson plans that can easily be picked up and applied in the classroom. All the lesson plans are centred around one or more video games. They indicate how to get over the barriers and obstacles, how they fit the curriculum, how much money it might cost, including possible no cost, cost options, how the assessment works, how to get it working in the classroom as easily as possible and in the most robust way, ensuring there is quality learning happening. So from the outset, we recognised that for the lesson plans to be picked up and used, that they had to be authentic. The lessons had to be written by teachers, you know, by teachers for teachers. All the lesson plans are centred around one or more video games. They indicate how, to, indicate how to get over the barriers and the obstacles, how they fit into the curriculum, how much money it might cost, including, you know, if, they, if there's, there's possible no cost options, how the assessment works, how to get it working for the classroom as easily as possible. From the outset, we recognised that for the lesson plan to be picked up and used, that they had to be authentic. The lessons had to be written by teachers by teachers for teachers. So to achieve this, we started out by traveling around Victoria, looking for teachers, whether they be noobs or teachers with loads of experience using games in the classroom and bring them together as a community. And so that community bounced ideas off each other, looking at what the barriers are and how to break them down and what areas, the new areas that could be explored. And to also importantly, review each other's lesson plans so that as the lesson plans started being produced, they would be peer reviewed, ensuring that they were well rounded as they came onto the database. And crucially, underlying everything, everybody needed to understand the clear goals and aims of game lessons. So game lessons, first aim was to build video game literacy. So, so people could speak and understand different ideas and terms around video games. They could acknowledge that there's so many video games out there that they're going to cover so many different areas of life and existence that um, <laughs> you sort of got everything covered with a video game. Um, and recognise that there's a, a load of teaching potential within these different games, or this vast range of different games. And then really importantly, we wanted to make sure that you, the teachers, go out and talk to other teachers and tell them that there's really great ways of using video games in the classroom to make it a... a evangelistic moment, if you like. So understanding that, we saw that there needed to be a clear way to approach making lesson plans using games, giving the options handles, if you like. So we've broken down the types of lesson plans that could be made into three main areas. So you can see here, there's learning about us. So using video games to look at as cultural products to, to look at um, the way that video games are made, to look at who's represented in video games, to look at who makes video games, um, and to look at how they affect our society. So it's sort of a, looking at video games as a reflection of us. 
or you use video games to learn specific skills. So as the second handle, if you like, you're working on finding a game that's going to teach specific skills. An example of that would be a flight simulator. So, you know, a game can mimic what it's like to really fly an aeroplane these days. And so you can learn how to actually fly a vi a, an aeroplane using a video game. But it's not just that that you can learn as a specific skill through a video game. Video games teach specific skills in obscure ways sometimes. There's a great game called uh, Papers, Please, which you play a border guard at an Eastern European country that's just opened up its borders to allow people to come in. And you have to check each one of their uh, details before they come into the country. So you have to check their papers. And so you get a learning and understanding of what it's like to be a border guard, but you also get an understanding of what the sort of criteria countries could have to whether or not to allow people in or not. And then the third area, a really important area, is making video games. Making video games requires a huge range of skills. Not everyone's going to have the whole range, but you can learn particular skills. You might be a coder, you might be an artist, you could be someone who's a team leader running the team, making sure they, they, they understand what the project is and that they're getting things done at the right time, at the right pace, and getting them out to people. You could be a marketer. You, know, you could be an audio producer. There's lots of different jobs that relate to other parts of the uh, working life that you have and even in your personal life. And there's actually a fourth area that I don't mention there in those three, but um, it's what we call the sandpit. It's the Minecraft uh, scenario where you might have taught your students about the water cycle uh, for half the term or most of the term, and you, and you want them to reflect on it. You want them to reflect on what they've learned. And so you say, go into Minecraft. I want you to, in your teams of three, go and produce me something that relates to what that learning has been for the last part of the term and see what they just come up with naturally. Explore their own learnings. And so when a lesson plan is ready to be formalized, the creator goes to the game lessons template to start entering all the details. The template was developed in consultation with all the other teachers in the early stages of the project to ensure the essential detail would be captured. So when a teacher came to look at the lesson plan, the key areas that may turn them off and hopefully on um, uh, would be brought into perspective and how they could work for them was the way that it could work for them was clear. Things like age classifications. Do you need to use a console for this lesson? Can you watch videos instead? Um, uh, is there a particular skill you're learning from this game or, or are you learning from the game itself? What are the costs and the workarounds to the cost? All the things that could make it easier for teachers to adopt it in their classroom. So I'm going to show you one example, and then my colleague, Kate Matthews, will demonstrate a game lesson plan that she's created. So we're in the game lessons portal. Um, it's acme.net.au forward slash game lessons. Uh, and you can start uh, searching, as you can see up here on the left, you can start searching a different uh, uh, year levels or learning capabilities and, and uh, different areas. So you can filter out the types of areas you're looking for. I'm just going to demonstrate this um, teaching with video games, exploring countries or continents within Carmen San Diego. It's got the year levels there. You can see a little brief introduction. So in the lesson plan, you get the gorgeous graphic, Carmen San Diego. Um, and um, you get an overview on this first page, you see. So you get uh, the areas it's trying to cover, uh, year levels, subject areas, etc. cetera. Um, get some graphic examples there and you know some key important bits of information that will lure you in and hopefully get you to use that in your classroom or make you, you know, let you decide that this perhaps isn't what I'm looking for and you can go looking for something else. Um, <clears throat> and of course, the author. And so you scroll back up to near the top here and you can look at the PDF of the lesson plan, which goes into much greater detail which, uh, of what is in the lesson plan. So you can see here that the sorts of level of detail goes into it. It shows you what curriculum um, and capabilities they're aligned to and skills. Classifications, what sort of equipment's required, who it's meant for, technical notes. You can see some you know, of the learning goals there and you really start getting into the actual activities then, so exactly what you're going to do in the classes. And then of course, your yeah, assessment. And now let's have a look at a great lesson plan that Kate Matthews have developed around Untitled Goose Game.
Untitled Kiss Game is by Melbourne-based studio House House and it was a global hit. In this game, players step into the role of a mischievous goose wreaking havoc on a small village. It uses the game as a hook to creatively engage students with written text conventions and text types such as factual recount. The lesson is connected with the Year 6 English curriculum. The lesson doesn't depend on each student playing the game. Um, options include watching trailers, watching playthroughs, and uh, looking at images from the game. If you do have a game license, you can also consider some um, whole class gameplay as a group. The lesson encourages students to practice text adaptation and interpretation from multimodal texts into written text format. They do this by acting as reporters, creating newspaper articles describing the events in the games, in the game. In doing so, they can explore news text conventions and text types, including read counts. For an extended sequence, you could also explore opinion pieces, interviews, and so on. One key purpose of this lesson is to offer a playful way in to exploring points of view and bias in texts. The game is played from the perspective of the goose, but by reporting on this story, students can consider how the events might change when viewed through the eyes of human characters. Thanks, Kate. I hope this talk has inspired you to go out and let other people know that video games have more to offer than just amazingly engaging entertainment, that there are many excellent teaching and learning opportunities there too. Please go out and explore ACME's game lessons. Thank you.